biological approach accounts for gender through sex hormones and evolutionary psychology. Testosterone is generally described as the male sex hormone and estrogen as the female sex hormone. High levels of testosterone have, however, been linked to the development of masculine typical gender, regardless of a person's biological sex. For example, aggression is considered a masculine behaviour and has been linked to high levels of testosterone in both males and females. Testosterone can also be linked to genetic conditions and therefore atypical development, essentially the cause of a fetus not to develop typically for its biological sex. For example, a condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia results in a female fetus being overexposed to testosterone. This results in abnormal development of genitalia, and 5% of people with this condition choose to live as a male, despite being biologically female. On the other hand, a condition called complete androgen insensitivity syndrome is when a male fetus is immune to the effects of testosterone, also causing abnormal development. Almost all people with this condition choose to live as a female, despite being biologically male. There is plenty of evidence to support the impact of sex hormones on behaviour, particularly testosterone. Several researchers, such as Deddy and others like Donald Borkham, have identified a link between high testosterone levels and perceived masculinity using the BEM sex role inventory test. Evolutionary psychologists account for the masculine and feminine characteristics through the concept of genome lag, the idea that the environment changes much faster than our genes adapt. Therefore, some characteristics were once necessary for survival and successful reproduction, however they're no longer necessary but still remain because of this. For example, during the environment of evolutionary adaptation, male characteristics such as being strong and aggressive were useful for survival and hunting. Males also used to compete for females, so characteristics that made them most successful were also passed on. This is called dominant male theory, as the most successful and dominant male was the one that successfully passed on their genes. It's essentially just how animals fight over their mate in wildlife documentaries. Therefore, characteristics like risk-taking are thought to be a result of genome lag. On the other hand, for women, the characteristics of being nurturing were useful to raise children, so these characteristics have been passed on and still exist as a feminine characteristic due to genome lag. These differences can also be explained through the division of labour during the environment of evolutionary adaptation. This relates to the different types of role in society that men and women had, and therefore the characteristics that developed to make them successful in these roles. Men typically went out hunting, which reinforces the idea that they needed to be strong and aggressive, whereas women gathered food from trees and bushes and looked after children, so they did not need the same traits to be successful. Whilst women could technically also have been hunters, it was important for them to have the safer role. If a woman went out hunting and was killed, the man would struggle to provide for the children as they could not produce milk. This caused the division of labour and therefore shows a clear difference in the types of characteristics needed for men and women to survive and successfully pass on their genes. Similar characteristics exist today due to genome lag, but we can also consider how the expectations of gender roles have been passed on through generations in a social way. Even today, men are generally seen as the breadwinners that go out and earn the money, women are seen as nurturers that look after the children. There are, however, several weaknesses for the evolutionary explanation of gender, as it is thought to underestimate cultural influences. For example, Ashcroft and Belgrave found that African-American girls tended to identify as more masculine and androgynous. This may be explained through cultural differences rather than biological ones. There is also evidence that actively undermines the evolutionary theory, as it looks at masculinity and femininity in a binary sense, whereas in some cultures there is a third gender. For example, a Fafanin in Samoa is biologically male, yet dresses and acts as a typical female. This is accepted in society, and a man can even have a relationship with a Fafanin and not be considered homosexual. So the biological approach struggles to account for this suggestion of a much broader gender spectrum. Finally, there are doubts about assumptions made about the EEA, as it is difficult to make a sweeping conclusion that all societies formed and therefore behaved in the same way. So these evolutionary theories are simply based on assumptions.